Welcome everyone. Uh, today we are recording the 2021 Earth Day program, Restore Our Common Home. And I am delighted uh, that I am being joined by colleagues at Catholic Climate Covenant to do this recording. Uh, this recording is meant for you to use if you're a facilitator and want to be able to see how a program online might be used or if you're an individual that wants to be able to use this program as a learning and spiritual enrichment and action type of program, but you want to do it in a way that still is not uh, solo and you want to go with a group uh, as you go through the program. Uh, so it is really meant to be exactly as a group, a parish group, a school group, a religious community would do if they were doing this program online. And I am going to introduce myself first, and then I will invite my colleagues uh, to introduce themselves. I'm Paz Artasa Regan, and I'm program manager for creation care teams at the Covenant. Uh, Kathy, would you start us with your introduction? Hi, I'm Kathy Foley, and I'm the office manager at Catholic Climate Covenant. Anna? Hi, everyone. I'm Anna Robertson, and I'm director of youth and young adult mobilization at Catholic Climate Covenant. Elena? Hi, everyone. I'm Elena, and I'm the director of communications at Catholic Climate Covenant. And Annie? Hi, I'm Annie Lalonde, and I'm an outreach intern for the Youth and Young Adult Mobilization at the Covenant. Thank you. And yes, it is the women of the Covenant on this webinar today. We're quite uh, happy to be doing it together. Uh, so we are going to get started. Um, as folks are doing this at home, you may wish to have a pen, pa pencil, uh, paper next to you. Uh, because there are going to be parts of the program where you are going to need to write something. So I want to welcome everyone. Uh, this program is meant to commemorate uh, the 51st anniversary of Earth Day. Uh, and some of you may also be using it to commemorate the sixth anniversary of, the anniv of Pope Francis's encyclical Laudato Si in May. Uh, I'm going to ask you to please uh, take a moment to read silently uh, the first paragraph here that is in the program right here in this section. Just take a minute to read and reflect a quote from earthday.org, which is the secular organization that runs the Earth Day program. Thank you. And that is the opening for this year's Earth Day program that EarthDay.org has on their program of to why, as to why they chose the theme Restore Our Earth. And uh, Catholic Climate Covenant, we are calling it Restore Our Common Home. Please join me in prayer as we start our program. God of all creation, your goodness and glory shine forth through everything you have made. Through the light of faith, help us to see this world, our common home, not as a resource to dominate and exploit, but as a gift to be cherished by all generations. Open our eyes, Lord. God of all, you made the earth and saw that it was good, but we have yet to properly care for it and give you thanks for the gifts you have given us through it. Now the earth cries out and your people hunger and thirst. Open our eyes, Lord. Open our eyes to see the beauty of your creation, the pain we have, been, we have inflicted upon it, and move us with compassion to help heal and restore your world. Open our eyes, Lord. Lead us to act as neighbors who do not pass by on the other side, 
but rather walk by side, side by side as sisters and brothers in Christ. Open our eyes, Lord. So that together we may care for all that you have made and with all creation sing your praise. Open our eyes, Lord. Prompted, Prompted by, you. by your spirit, we ask this yes. in the name of Jesus, through whom all creation was made. Thank you. Amen. We are now going to move to the readings in the program. Uh, I will put this in a way that most people can see the full reading. There you go. For the leader upon the Gittith, a Psalm of David. Lord, our Lord, how awesome is your name through all the earth. I will sing of your majesty above the heavens with the mouths of babes and infants. You've established a bulwark against your foes to silence enemy and avenger. When I see your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and stars that you set in place. What is man that you are mindful of him? and a son of man that you care for him. Yet you've made him little less than a God, crowned him with glory and honor. You've given him rule over the works of your hands, put all things at his feet, all sheep and oxen, even the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and whatever swims the paths of the seas. Lord, our Lord, how awesome is your name through all the earth. Thank you, Anna. Reading number two, please. Later. Ecological conversion is to return to God. It is to return to dust and ashes as creatures in fraternal communion with the wonders and terrifying powers of creation. For some people, ecological conversion may be as simple as accepting the reality of climate change and beginning to shift behaviors accordingly. It could mean an awakening to the reality that nature bears the touch of God and is therefore deserving of reverence. It might lead to giving up meat or eating far less of it, or at least being more conscious of how it is produced. Of course, it could mean a lot more. Under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, ecological conversion is what has the potential to create a holistic political economy in which we no longer idolize profits or consumer ease. Imagine a new and yet ancient arrangements of economics, neither capitalist nor socialist, in which citizens become caretakers in ways that are profoundly attuned to the integrity of creation and the well-being of all people. Doug DeMio. Number three. This conversion calls for a number of attitudes which together foster a spirit of generous care full of tenderness. First, it entails gratitude and gratuitousness, a recognition that the world is God's loving gift and that we are called quietly to imitate his generosity in self-sacrifice and good works. Do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing and your father who sees in secret will re reward you. It also entails a loving awareness that we are not disconnected from the rest of creatures, but joined in a splendid universal communion. As believers, we do not look at the world from without, but from within, conscious of the bonds with which the Father has linked us to all beings. By developing our individual God-given capacities, an ecological conversion can inspire us to greater creativity and enthusiasm in resolving the world's problems and in offering ourselves to God as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. We do not understand our superiority as a reason for personal glory or irresponsible dominion, but rather as a different capacity, which in its turn entails a serious responsibility stemming from our faith. And our last reading, uh, Kathy. A call to reflection and action. Grateful for the gift of creation and contrite in the face of the deteriorating condition of the natural world, we invite Catholics and men and women of goodwill in every walk of the life to consider with us the moral issues 
raised by the environmental crisis. We asked the Catholic community, how are we called to care for God's creation? How may we apply our social teaching with its emphasis on the life and dignity of the human person to the challenge of protecting the earth, our common home? What can we in the Catholic community offer to the environmental movement? And what can we learn from it? How can we encourage a serious dialogue in the Catholic community in our parishes, schools, colleges, universities, and other settings on the significant ethical dimensions of the environmental crisis? From the invitation to reflection and action on environmental environment in light of Catholic social teaching, a pastoral statement of the United States Catholic Conference, November 14th, 1991. Thank you. Thank you for the readings. Um, the progression of the readings uh, were to take us from biblical reading to Laudato Si and to something that was written by the USCCD in 1991. 30 years ago. Uh, we will process a little bit of that later. Uh, for now, we're going to move to the video section of the program, which should complement from the readings. Um, and as we watch it, try to also consider some of the things we have just read uh, and see how the things connect. And I will share from my computer the video.
I'm Pat Bergen from the Congregation of St. Joseph. Probably the biggest contribution we have made is through our five mother houses. One we lost to Katrina and it's now being transformed into a water garden that will keep 3,780 acres in all directions from flooding in New Orleans. Up to 9,000 acres will have diminished flooding. Our other four mother houses were extremely oversized for for us and so we began looking at the signs of the times, realized that soon people in need of assisted care would not be able to find housing. So we deconstructed our buildings using everything that was in those buildings to send to people who build for the poor. Then we constructed living centers for assisted care um, using lead gold guidelines and powering them with solar energy. These spaces as space became available then would be offered to those with limited income. In addition, we have spirituality centers connected to each that were mandated to per offer processes, programs to teach other people how to build sustainably and live sustainably. Since we wanted to live and work sustainably, we committed ourselves to certain things to help the living represent the investment we had made in those buildings. Good afternoon, my name is Marilyn Cott. I'm a parishioner at the Holy Name of Jesus in uh, Redlands, California, and I'm a member of the Creation Care Ministry here. Um, Mark Candelaria and I are here today taking pictures of our landscaping. Um, we've, been, we've been mapping the parish campuses um, to learn about what lives here, both the flora and the fauna, and we share that with the other parishioners via the bulletin and uh, other communication methods. And what we think that does is that we hope that that increases appreciation for everything that God has given us on this uh, beautiful earth and uh, that that can inspire uh, more careful caretaking. And meanwhile, um, four days until Lent, I uh, wish you a joyful um, and meaningful Lent. I'm Trish. Hello, I'm Sandra. Hello, I'm Cindy. Uh, and I'm Mark. We're here uh, down at the Redlands Conservancy here in beautiful sunny SoCal, fulfilling our Lenten penance the best way we know how. Uh, manual labor. <laughs> We're here in partnership with the Redlands Conservancy to general mulch work, ground work, restoring uh, restoring native native uh, fauna, fauna, flora, and just the best way we know how, and the best way now to take care of our common home. I'm Sabrina. I'm representing the Care for Creation Ministry at St. Thomas More Catholic Community in St. Paul, Minnesota. We restore creation by doing small things with great love. Laudato Si has figured prominently in our work and we use all available communication channels to spread its message. Our group consistently acts to engage each other and our larger community on the why and the how to care for our common home. In our monthly meetings, we plan and follow up actions such as organizing Laudato Si study sessions and screenings of ecological films, conducting an energy audit and installing parish-wide energy saving LED lighting publishing eco-friendly tips in our bulletin, and engaging in community actions to promote ecologically sound policies and practices. We're committed to the ongoing work of translating ecological spirituality into action. prayerful partnerships dedicated to restoring creation in North and South Carolina. Some great partnerships are allowing us to do green energy initiatives. Other partnerships are working on advocacy and education. For example, an across state line partnership between parishioners at St. Matthew's Parish, the Sisters of Mercy in Belmont, and St. Philip Neary's Parish in South Carolina 
resulted in a very well-received environmental racism webinar. The same team has also put together two other well-attended events. One of these events was a half-day virtual retreat hosted by Sister Rosemary Tresp of the Sisters of Mercy that drew in people from all over North America and focused on connecting Catholic spirituality with creation care. Another fruit of these prayerful partnerships was a four-week book club. Again, eco-justice advocates from all over the country came together to learn from each other how we're called to do restorative work of creation care. Other prayerful partnerships in many parishes are doing the restorative work of changing consumer practices. These parishes have all adopted an alternative gift-giving program for Christmas and also throughout the year to care for both workers and the environment. Another group doing restorative work is at St. Luke's Parish. They have a gardening and faith team that preserves and enhances their natural habitat for wildlife. When we all come together to care for creation, great things happen. And praise be! Can you see my screen again? Okay. Let me. How about now? Yes, good. Okay. So finished with the uh, video, which I hope uh, the folks uh, here and at home have enjoyed uh, watching. Uh, we're going to move now into our discussion section. Uh, but what I really need you to think about, the video showed examples of how to restore our common home and what Catholics are doing. Uh, the theme for today's uh, program, Restore Our Common Home, is to look at the efforts uh, that while global sometimes, really begin at the local level. 
and it begins also with our own eco-conversion, our own changes of heart. Uh, with that in mind, uh, please take a few minutes uh, to reread if you need to, uh, to think about what you saw in the video, and then look at what the questions are that are coming up uh, so that when we're ready to discuss it as a group, we will be ready. Uh, there are five main questions. So just take a couple of minutes to reflect and look at the questions and perhaps jot down some of the things that you might uh, think about. And we'll have time also between the questions to do some of that thinking. Okay, uh, for those uh, folks that are following this at home and or you're doing this program online, if you have more than a small group of four or five people, you might want to look into getting breakout rooms um, and that you can have a smaller group discussion. Uh, if not, uh, here we've got a perfect group of five, so we are all set for the discussion. Uh, my fir the first question we're going to talk about is, what does restore our common home mean to you? Because I think the terms restore our common home might have different meanings for different folks. Are there certain words that when we say the word restore and restoration, uh, are those certain words that come up to you? Uh, maybe right now, just take a couple of minutes, write the words on a piece of paper, and then we'll share them with each other um, and we'll share our, our thoughts and put your hand up when you're ready to discuss. I see two. Kathy, Annie, are you ready? Okay. Uh, so I guess the first question, uh, what does restore common home mean to you? And I open it up. First one that wants to speak, just put your hand up. I think we're a small group enough that we can do it like that. Well, I think um, it said are there certain words that you associate. So I associate healing and also the word nurture, nurture. Um, which both take time and effort. And I think love and also clean up, cleaning up made, made sense when it came to restoring. Kathy, yeah. Yeah, um, I kind of went through a, a stream that went from one spot and ended up in a very different spot. <clears throat> but I started off with purity to restore coming back to the purity, getting rid of all of the 
the toxins of, of the earth and of the world. Um, and that led me to a return of beauty. Um, and the, the, some of Native Americans have a term of walk in beauty, walk in harmony. And so my, my thought process is, goes all the way to, to that idea of walking in harmony with everyone and everything. So my restoration brings us back to harmony. I like that. Yep. All right, I can share. Um, walk in harmony and uh, nurture. I wrote down as Elena and Kathy were talking. I, I really like both of those. Um, to me, when I see the word restore, I um, immediately think of um, restorative justice, of repair, of this return to right mm -hmm. relationship. And one of the things that that calls to mind for me, particularly in our um, in our U.S. context, <clears throat> is that there is no right relationship to return to without reckoning with the history, the legacy of enslavement, of colonization, of genocide, um, of Black and Indigenous people. Um, so, to me, I think there's a real profound call to um, repentance to um, the hope of the possibility of right relationship um, and to the hard work of of repenting and attending to history of, of great harm. Mm -hmm. That really encapsulates the whole integral ecology. But when we're talking about these issues, it's not just um, when we're putting the focus on the green issues, but really increasing it to all justice as part of our restoration work. Thank you. Annie, do you have anything? Yes. Um, when I first read Restore Our Common Home, it made me ask myself, what do we consider our common home and what are we restoring? And it just makes me think back to Genesis that what God created was good and we are restoring that goodness. And that's what we are trying to work towards. And trying to identify what that goodness still is and trying to find it um, through our care for creation. So it really kind of brought it back to a full circle of thinking back to what, what are our roots in all of this and how can we get back to that? Yeah. yeah, for me, the words also that come up on when I think restore restoration are the ones you've talked about. And I also think of health, uh, both physical health, emotional health, spiritual health, earth health, all of it connected. Thank you. Uh, we read Psalm 8. And when you read the message of Psalm 8, uh, which just to remind you uh, a few of the words there of Psalm 8, um, what are those, what's the message that you get from that psalm for the present moment here in? U.S. 2021, as we lived through COVID and through racial tensions and uh, environmental issues. Um, and for me, some of the words that really brought up in Psalm 8, uh, the whole idea of humanity being given a special responsibility uh, what did you see the message of Psalm 8? Yes, Kathy. Um, listening to, to the, the words of Psalm 8, I'm reminded of one of my favorite hymns of How Great Thou Art. And it, it, it takes in, and it just, just in the glorious uh, opening, um, you hear, and and especially the verse of you know, oh Lord my God, how great Thou art, reminds me and that God is above all of our um, our issues that we're dealing with, and 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 that gives a lot of hope because He's not the problem, um, and if we we can rely on Him and move towards Him and enjoy this 
beauty that he has given us. And so it just, it calls a, me to a transcendence of, of the often um, depression of dealing with what we have. There's something better and we can work towards that and move towards that. Anyone have other message from Psalm 8? Yeah, when I read the line, you've given him rule over the work of your hands, that I feel like is such a clear, a clear call for us right there. Just, it really makes you read it and think, this has been asked for us longer than, longer than the issues that started. It was our job to look out for what he gave us. Yeah. So I just, that really stood out to me. I, had that I went back to read it and um, what Annie had shared earlier that God created the earth and it was good and everything was was perfect really and then when Psalm 8 it says we were given this and this and it details the beauty of that so I just think of what trust God gave us you know and I think that that's love right believing in us to be the best people possible and that we have to remind ourselves of that as well yep yep okay um, oh yeah. sorry i can share um for me what really strikes me about this reading is a sort of call to wonder um i just am looking at the at the end this list, all the sheep and oxen, mm -hmm. beasts of the field, birds of the air, fish of the sea, whatever swims, the paths of the seas, this idea that God delights in um, an abundance, in diversity, in, in diversity in ways we can't even begin to, we can't even begin to name all of the different ways. And so I see in this an invitation in myself to, to pay attention to the times that I want to shrink my circle, that I want to try to contain other people into categories um, that are maybe more comfortable for me and an invitation to instead act as God does and wonder and delight in the many, many ways that creation um, makes manifest God's own diversity. Mm -hmm. I'm loving the very rich messages that you see in all this. Um, now we're going to turn to the 1991 pastoral from the USCCB. I'm going to bring it back up uh, because the question is, uh, 30 years ago, the US bishops called the Catholic community um, and they asked questions about our work. How do you respond in 2021 to this 1991 pastoral statement? And I will put it up here just so. I'll tell you my first reaction when I read this was, wow, 30 years have we really even began to respond as a Catholic community. We've done the sum, but have we done what we should have been doing? But I leave it up to you to also give me your impressions of how you respond to this. Something that stuck out to me immediately is this question, what can we in the Catholic community offer to the environmental movement and what can we learn from it? Um, I think especially that second part, what can we learn from it? This question of in these, in these 30 years, um, how well have we listened? Um, how have we stepped into our humility um, before our, our partners in this work? Um, and as we, become learners, how do we do so in a way that um, we don't shirk our responsibility um, as saying, oh, I'm still learning, I can't act yet. Um, and then, of course, also, what can we offer? Um, what are the gifts of Catholic spirituality that can sustain um, this work um, for Catholics and non-Catholics alike? If you've got something, put your hand up so I know not to keep going. Yes, Kathy. 
the thing that drives, uh, speaks to me is the fact that there is so much out there that many of us aren't aware of. Having come to the covenant only a year ago, um, was the Catholic in the pew, it's pause like to say, didn't think about this. And then finding so many people doing so much work, it's, it's gratifying and it's wonderful. Um, of course, there's a lot more to be done, but it's just, it's, it, it's an eye opener. And I just think, um, yeah, we've come a long way, but we've got a long way to go. But boy, aren't there some wonderful workers in the field. Yep. And I hope that the video gave you a little glimpse of what is happening in the field. Anyone else? Let's keep going then. Uh, question four. It deals with the passage from Laudato Si. How is the work, our work, to restore our common home part of ecological conversion that Pope Francis talks about in Laudato Si? Uh, and I want to think about how the ecological conversion is part of spiritual conversion. Is there a link? Is there a link in your lives, in your work? Does one need the other? Does one move from the other? Maybe it's a chicken egg question. What comes first? Not to always um, begin, uh, but to me, I think I've always thought of ecological conversion as having, you know, a bracketed, invisible, spiritual between the words ecological and conversion. Um, so to me, they're one and the same. Um, the word conversion to me speaks to the way that um, these crises require a transformation at the, the most basic level, which is the level of spirit. Um, and it goes back to that right relationship that I that I shared earlier. Um, you know, as Catholics, we proclaim faith in a, in a God that is Trinitarian, that's fundamentally relational, and and uh, that we are made in that God's image. And so we too are fundamentally relational. And so this ecological conversion requires the reordering of our basic relationship, um, which must be spiritual. I'll tell you, I, I always, when I talk about these issues, one goes right next to the other. Um, you walk together with this conversion. As you do the ecological conversion, there's a spiritual transformation that is happening. And if you're doing a spiritual transformation, it opens your eyes up to that ecological conversion that is needed. Uh, so I always say they're hand in hand. Uh, you can't, I mean, I think in many ways, some folks are able to do the ecological conversion and not think of the other, but for Catholics, if we're doing it because of love of God and love of creation, it goes together. Anyone else have a? I was gonna say also, um, I love the way Anna said it. I think I'm saying the same thing, just not as nice. <laughs> not. Um, you know, it's like a physical, it's like our physical space, but also a, when we talk about common home, it's shared space with others. Mm -hmm. So sharing that space means also like respecting the fact that others need to, to be healthy and respected and the whole dignity of life, all of it. That's what I think about with the ecological conversions that we're thinking of our faith and that God created this and that we live here, but that we also want to respect the fact that others share this faith. Yeah. Yeah. Keep going. Okay. Um, so this is the part that we're going to talk about kind of links this to uh, the next section, which is the action. I think about how you, your family, your community have responded to the call for ecological conversion. And you can list those ways that you've already responded in a piece of paper, or you might already have thought of it. Uh, and also list ways that you might want to respond in the future. So is there something else that's needed to be done? 
because I think that we can all think of things that we've done, but we shouldn't just stay in the past, think future-wise. Because this will help us in the next section. Anyone want to share some things that you've already done that are ecological conversion? Yes, Annie. Yeah, um, just when I read the word family, when I first started studying like sustainability and different environmental sciences, at first my parents kind of like would make a joke like, oh, we won't use as many paper towels and stuff like that. But then when I was like home for Christmas, my dad was so excited he bought a certain salt for the driveway that was less harmful to the environment. and they kind of just started doing stuff like that. And I think little things like that, where if you show that you care about something, other people around you will notice it and maybe you know incorporate it into their daily lives in a more casual way. Um, it doesn't always have to be a grand scheme, like a big project. It can be everyday things that you're switching and then that becomes a big grand scheme thing. Yeah. So It's part of our evangelization. That's how my husband calls it. You're evangelizing the family and the neighborhood and the parents sometimes. Yes. I'd say my daughter's uh, already kind of, kids come already kind of equipped with the love of, of earth and planet and others. And I know my daughter who's seven is vegetarian and she's been that way for a year because she just doesn't want to hurt the animals. And my other daughter goes out and um, they clean the yard and the street and um when things break i'm more like hey we don't have time to fix it let's buy something else and she's like no i'm gonna get the super glue and put things back together so just kind of like because she doesn't want to spend money because she doesn't want to buy more things and it's like thanks for teaching me all these things that i'm supposed to be learning you know now as well as part of my faith excellent Yeah, one of the things that we've done, I have a large family. I have six children, all adults at this point, um, but three of the adult children are still living at home. So we drink a lot of coffee around our house. Now, that's as a common conversation in the covenant, too, about how much coffee people drink. Uh, but we drink a lot. And <laughs> we have, of you know, there she goes, drinking her, having her coffee. Um, so we buy fair trade coffee beans and we grind our own beans and put them in the little reusable K cups mm -hmm. instead of the throwaway plastic. So, and then we take the great coffee grounds that we've used and distribute them out on the, the various plants outside. So this one thing that we do in the family has just grown. And so now we're all doing it. Elena, yeah. I just wanted to mention also we went solar in my house. Um, it was a big expense, but it, we financed it and DC is giving us a quarter of the money back because of all the rebates and stuff. So it was a risk, but we're starting to see the dividends of that. And that was definitely because we wanted to, with our tiny house, you know, just add solar um, energy to the grid. Um, for myself, I think I'll just add, um, I made a list of kind of some themes of things, so I won't spend time with all of them, but um, I think really it's been about really trying to identify those local organizations who are at the front lines doing this work, um, work around environmental justice, um, as well as um, the indigenous groups in the area where I live. Um, and really just being attentive to ways that I can support and further that work. So sometimes that's showing up for something, sometimes that's um, sometimes that's supporting um, an ask in terms of policy, sometimes that's about resource redistribution and, and thinking about um, how to support uh, financially these different efforts of these groups. Um, so there's a lot of different ways and I think the last year has required um, me to really think about, you know, how do I do this intentionally when life looks pretty different than it used to? Um, so there's a lot of 
I, I almost, I have more ideas about ways to respond in the future um, right now. Yeah, and I think that's where we're going to move to. Uh, so in the video, you saw and heard examples of Catholic restoration activities. We've discussed some here today. In the readings, uh, we learned about the call for eco-conversion. We're now invited to share what we will do in the future for our common home. And as folks are at home doing this program, you will notice that the program includes ideas of what you could do. Uh, examples of tree planting and uh, cleanups, um, you know, community stream cleanup things, planting gardens, or to come up with another type of uh, idea, something that's educational, um, that connects with uh, local groups as Anna is talking about. Uh, that is up to you at the local level to figure out what you're going to do as a family, community, parish, school, etc. And we have the link there for examples. Uh, I had told uh, some of you that I have an idea that I wanted to share with you of what the covenant as a staff community might want to uh, sort of look into doing locally at our offices once things open up and we're more in our offices. And my idea goes to having a St. Kateri Habitat certification uh, for that common space that is between the McCarrick Pavilion, where, is, where our offices are, and the Theological College. Uh, there's a middle courtyard uh, with like a little garden, and it's almost there with being St. Kateri. Uh, we would have to probably speak with the building folks at the McCarrick Pavilion and talk also with the theological college about getting some of the seminarians, the uh, folks that are studying uh, involved uh, to be able to perhaps uh, have a wildlife uh, butterfly garden in the summer. Uh, they already have the St. Francis statue. Uh, we would, could put a little uh, script of little plaque about why we're doing this or distribute it to the folks. Um, and so I wanted to check with Kathy and uh, with others, uh, what do you think of that idea? And Kathy, I'm asking because as uh, office manager, she's in the office more than I am. Uh, so how would that be able to be done? As Yay! a contribution from the covenant to our little <laughs> space there. I think it's a wonderful idea, Paz. Okay, and so we, we will we... work on it. Yeah. Absolutely, now, we'll, we'll do it. The thing is, is that Annie and Anna uh, are not even in the DC area, so we'll send you pictures if this gets done. But I also want to invite you to start thinking of anything that you might want to do in your own little patch of land that connects to you. Uh, and some of it doesn't have to be your land. Uh, there are lots of community gardens where people can get involved. Uh, there's sometimes schools and parishes that are looking for a little bit of labor to go do a stream cleanup or a beach cleanup, uh, anything like that. Uh, but with your families, uh, with your roommates, I invite you to start thinking about something. I know that we are going to do something with our very neglected backyard. Uh, I've already ordered the wildlife, uh, the wild uh, seeds, uh, wildflowers. Uh, to plant back there. I want to have a little corner that's kind of like a meditation prayer garden with also some butterfly pollinator type things. So, and when you do it, when we do it, anybody does this, we do want you to submit your activities to us so that we can have them on our web page and other people can come and get ideas and get inspired. And please come back to the program. Uh, you can either submit through he the here or through the web page itself, whatever it is that you've done. Share a photo, share a video, share a little story, a poem, whatever you want about what you've done. Do I have a thumbs up for that? Yes, thank you. So we're 
almost at the conclusion. So thank you for being here. Uh, thank you for helping us record this. Uh, as for folks at home, if you have any questions, uh, you are more than welcome to send us an email at info at catholicclimatecovenant.org. Uh, we will respond to you uh, about something that's in the program or some idea that you might have. Uh, but for now, we are going to end the program with a short prayer that is uh, a unison prayer. So um, I will read it out loud and I ask the folks here to just quietly follow with me. And let us center ourselves at this point uh, after this wonderful hour of readings, discussion, listening uh, to others' uh, ideas about re restoration and healing for our earth. Uh, and remember that God is always in our presence and in our world. Creator God, who made our beautiful world, appointed us as its guardian and gifted us with everything we need. Forgive us for the times we cause it harm, for the times our way of life affects our neighbors. Inspire us to care for the environment, to help rebuild lives and communities, to share in griefs and anxieties, joys and hopes for all your people, so that your creation may flourish. Amen. Thank you, everyone. At this point, we will close. Uh, hoping that if you and remember, folks, if anybody has questions, just let us know at info at catholicclimatecovenant.org. Thank you, Annie. Thank you, Anna. Thank you, Elena. Thank you, Kathy. Take care. Bye.